go. Ooh, welcome everyone to another episode of Slasher Scotty. I am your host, Scotty McCoy, and boy, do I have a surprise for all of you. I have on Zoom with me right now, Jake Kaufman, and he will be playing Ryan in the upcoming film, Catfishing. Hey, Jake, how are you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so glad that uh, you could be here and joining me. Um, so I have yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. Um, some about catfishing, some about, you know, your start in acting and all that stuff. So speaking about that, how did you get your start into acting? How did I get my start in acting? Well, I guess it all starts growing up, uh, watching movies and stuff on TV and on DVD and VHS and stuff. And uh, just playing dress up in the backyard, playing war and uh, pirates or whatever you want to call it. That's how it all really started. Um, my elementary school and junior high didn't really have an acting uh, program. All we had really was the Christmas pageant. So obviously did that kind of stuff. Uh, but my real start was in high school. Uh, we had acting one, two, and three that you could take as a sophomore, junior, senior. So I started off in those classes and uh, ended up doing the productions my uh, senior year of high school. And that's really how it all got started, taking those classes every year as my elective for art, and awesome. I fell in love with it there. Awesome. Did any of your, um, like, for high school, did you have, like, a high school TV station type of thing that you ever were able to work at or anything? I wish. We had a limited bell schedule. They kind of cut back as I was a freshman. Uh, so, yeah, we didn't have any sorts of TV stations or anything like that. Uh, we just had the theater program. Uh, that's, that's cool, though. Uh, did you go to college for acting at all? I went to college for engineering. So, oh, nice. Totally yeah, different. So I graduated last year from Ohio State with a mechanical engineering degree. Nice. Um, so, yeah, that's I went and, went and studied, studied engineering, and now I'm not using it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, what, I mean, acting is fun. I mean, you do something that you enjoy to do, right? Exactly. I had some internships that were uh, really fun, and they were good, but I knew that uh, I had to pursue acting. and. Yeah, it's been a blast ever since. So awesome. So, uh, what do you believe is the hardest part for being an actor, and what about the easiest? The hardest part of being an actor right now is uh, paying the bills. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hardest part of being an actor yeah. um, for me. It's 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 a long process to get auditions and stuff like that. So I just graduated from college. Uh, and I have a good agent down here in Atlanta, and I got some exciting stuff coming up, uh, but that's down the road. And right now it's uh, just getting through that audition process uh, and getting those small yeses uh, yeah. that lead to great connections and everything has been the toughest part. Um, but the easiest part, I think, is uh, being on set. Nice. Uh, it's, it's difficult. It can be difficult in the moment at certain times, but as long as your preparation is decent. Uh, the most fun is, and when stuff is fun, it's usually easy. Uh, and so the, I guess the easiest part is probably, or watching stuff. Watching yeah. stuff back is the easiest. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. and, the, and that, a lot of people don't realize that. They, they're like, oh, but acting looks so fun. It looks so easy. And it looks like it's, like it's the easiest job in the world. You can make millions of dollars doing, doing all these movies. But they don't, they don't, re they don't realize that like 95% of being an actor is being rejected. Yeah, no, exactly. There's a lot of memorization involved. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of memorization and uh, scene work that goes into auditions and uh, and the scenes themselves once you're on set. Um, so a lot of it is, okay, I'm going to put in all this work for something that I may or may not get cast in. Right. Uh, yep, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, and that's the thing, like, and I mean, like you said, you, it might be harder to get, you know, the pay to bills and to get get roles right now. But even the biggest of actors started out where you are right now as well. You know, where, you know, where you, it's harder to get roles and everything. But then they, you know, that one movie, that one role can lead to a lifetime, a, you know, a life changing experience. Exactly. And I've already started to see the fruits of that a little bit. Uh, awesome. Just from working on a couple of projects. Um, you get those people who are like, hey, I'd love for you to work with so-and-so, or I think you'd be great for this project and they'll send you a rollover. Um, I've even gotten a couple roles without even auditioning for stuff. Um, so it's really, connections are really where it's at and it's really just getting that start. 
Absolutely. And, yeah. So, so you mentioned about um, about uh, you know memorizing your lines and preparing for a role. Do you have a certain style or way that you prepare for a role? And what about memorizing the lines? Do you have a way to prepare for that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it depends. I'm still finding my exact rhythm because uh, every project for me has been a little different. Mm -hmm. I did a feature film in. Uh, so usually it's like if it's a short film your auditions may consist of over half of the scenes mm -hmm. between the initial self-tape and the callback. You're already pretty familiar with it, so it just takes a little bit of memorization, maybe reading with the other person uh, before you get to set to really get those lines down. Uh, or, and then I've been on some projects where we do rehearsals every week, and it's like, okay, that takes care of a lot of the memorization is just through doing that. Yeah. And then I was on a feature film in Idaho. It was a really last minute thing. And you don't see the script, or I saw the script like the week before it because it was so last minute, but I didn't have any time to memorize it because I was driving down to Miami for like a photo shoot or whatever. And then I had to like fly out to Idaho. Uh, so I didn't really have time to sit down and memorize a 117 right. page script. Um, and I was the lead in it. So that one was very, it started off being the night before I would just read the scenes that were shooting the next day. Uh, but then there were so many changes going into the script. It was like, okay, well, I'll just memorize a day of kind of the scene before, yeah. um, which was really interesting because there is some improvisation involved with that. But most of it was, okay, we're just going to rehearse the scene while yeah. the crew is setting up the scene. We're going to rehearse everything. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it depends on the project, definitely. Um, but, yeah, so I'm still, I'm still knocking down my exact rhythm and, and how it'll work. I'm sure it'll change as I go get older and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But yeah, something I'm finding that works right now is reading over it, uh, maybe copying it down in a notes app if I don't have a paper and pen yeah. and using my phone to like write down the lines. I just have the lines that I say and then going back and saying my lines while listening to the other person. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you find it harder to do it by yourself, like re reading over it, especially when it's not just you or do you have to have somebody there with you? I love, love, love when I'm able to read with somebody, if I can just say it out loud, cause that gets the muscle memory going with your tongue and your, I guess, hearing memory, if that's even a yeah. thing, verbal and hearing audio memory, plus your mental memory. Um, it just connects everything when you're able to read out loud with a partner for me. Right. That's how it is for me. When I, when I'm like reading over scripts, I have to have somebody with me. I can't do it, you know, by myself because I'm reading my role and then I'm reading somebody else's role or I'm reading my role and I'm skipping over the other person's role and I'm going to end a memory one time it happened to me where I memorized the other person's lines and not, not mine because yeah. I'm reading both roles I'm like I'm not doing this anymore yeah and it's kind of like too it's kind of like a rhythm you kind of get in a yep. kind of like a song and it makes it a little yep. easier because you're used to this uh mm -hmm. rhythm and pattern yeah yep Yep. I'll, uh, and if there's like three or four people in the, in the uh, scene, uh, even if it's just me and somebody else reading over it, I'll just have to read it and like read my lines and have them read their lines, like every other line. Cause I can't, if I do more than one, I'm not going to memorize mine. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 beca it can become a hassle at times. So and I know some people that, just memorize, I know some people memorize just like the whole entire, everybody's lines. And yep. um, I, I might start making a, habit of that i like to get down with the idea of what they're saying and the, the keywords um but yeah did you ever get into like method acting or character acting yeah so in my initial acting classes and classes that i've taken uh i've just uh studied different you know meisner the method um a little bit of um some other people too um as method works i use method for certain scenes mm -hmm. um where it's like, okay, um, I mean, it really depends, but sometimes I'll use a method. Other times I'm just like, okay, let me, I know that I'm on set. I know that everything, I'm just going to play pretend with these imaginary circumstances and ask what if, right. um, imagine if, and sometimes it's emotional recall, mm -hmm. but yeah, it depends on the scene. Absolutely. I know a friend of mine, he's actually, uh, filming a movie down in uh alexandria virginia it's called smack and uh he's a big time method actor he's playing the role of a drug dealer and uh he didn't he didn't do drugs but but he uh he uh went to like drug rehabilitation facilities and different clinics and kind of interviewed them and talked to them and seen what do they go through what was going through their mind at the time when they were using and like kind of like talk to the doctors and all that stuff 
to kind of you know get into that character so he when he actually has to film the film the role he knows what somebody that is a drug addict would do yeah so, that, that that's that's a I, I think method acting can be a really good way to to be an actor but it also like it depends on the role as well you don't want to if you're like uh you know have like say an eating disorder your character has an eating disorder that's going to be kind of hard you know it you know to lose the weight you need to do it in a healthy way as well definitely there was one project i was on where um the dude was supposed to be like it was a party and the dude is supposed to be kind of like uh more drunk or whatever and so Obviously, like, you can't get drunk on set, but uh, right. um, I was like, okay, well, I just won't eat that much, and I'll, mm -hmm. and I'll just make sure that I'm kind of, like, tired and, like, whatever, so that I'm, like, more loopy and everything, but then um, afterwards, I was like, well, maybe I wish I would have had more energy mm -hmm. so that I could have made choices, like, thought through the scene more, because at, mm -hmm. at that time, I was, I mean, it, the scene turned out great, mm -hmm. um, and I was just kind of very tired and uh, loopy and like able to come off right. well. But then afterwards, I was thinking well, that worked. But maybe I could have just kept had more energy and right. then been able to like react better and think through it yeah. better. So that's something that I'm. I'm uh, for example, when you said the eating disorder, it's like that would be good. Um, but then I've I've told myself, wait a second, maybe I should yeah. be in a better state of mind so yeah. that I can make choices. Um, if the yeah. director gives them and add energy if I need to or think and be more creative on delivery. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And there's always ways that you can imitate the eating disorder way without having to go an unhealthy way that makes you not as prepared on set as well. Right. Cause it could I think it could really when you're when you have those low energy levels, it can it can nab that creativity in certain yeah. in certain times. Absolutely. Um so for those unaware of what catfishing is, can you let us know a little bit about it? Uh, I can let you know a little bit. Yeah, I know uh, the NDA clauses and everything. You probably can't give away too much. Yeah, so catfishing is uh, obviously two people falling in love online and someone's not who they say they are exactly. Right. Um, yeah, I don't want to give too much more than that. Um, Makes sense. But I haven't uh, finished reading over the latest version of the script yet. Uh, we're yeah. set to film here in the, very soon, uh, but we don't have exact dates or anything yet because the director... Awesome wrapping up some other stuff nice so we know your character is ryan can you tell us a bit about him who is ryan uh ryan <laughs> is a young honcho um and uh i like to think of him as as kind of like myself he's the young uh, in the stories like a hot shot i like to think um and uh yeah he's he's spunky and he's creative um and he's, he's a little desperate for love and yeah. that, can, that can cause some trouble. Perfect. I can't wait to see this. So yeah. um, when do you start filming catfishing and is there, where is the location at? Uh, I think it's going to be filmed somewhere around here, but we don't have exact dates yet. Okay. Awesome. And is there an anticipated release date? Maybe like 2022, 2023? I'm thinking end of 2022. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. That's what I'm guessing. That'll be great, and I will be keeping a lookout for it. I know you're on my Facebook, so uh, definitely uh, message me, and I can promote it as well. And, of course, I'll be getting a copy because I like these type of movies. So I, I, I think this will be a, something that will, you know, interest me, and I'm sure a lot of other people that are listening and watching this as well. Um, definitely. Yeah, so the last question I got for you, do you have any other projects in the works that you would like to tell the listening and the viewing audience about? Yeah, so there's a couple of projects right now in post. Um, there's always Lola. Mm -hmm. Always Lola is a coming of age story about a group of uh, teenagers. I play the antagonist in that one. Um, I'm like the the jerk. Me and this other guy are like buddy buddy. We're like kind of like Jake and Logan Paul, just super hyped up. We're always vlogging stuff. Um, that one has been submitted to some festivals. I'm excited to see, I'm excited to see the final product of that. Uh, awesome. Some of the cast and crew has already seen the final cut. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Um, but good reviews have come from it so far. Uh, and then there's Keys. Keys is the one that I filmed in Idaho. Uh, that's in post right now. Yeah. Uh, I'm a composer in that one, a teenage, it's a coming of age. Okay, he wants to follow his passion. Um, uh, and he has this, men he meets this mentor and he takes on this job that he maybe or maybe shouldn't have said yes to. 
Um, and that's what that's about. That was really cool, really beautiful scenery. There'll be some really beautiful shots in that one. Nice. Uh, and then there's the butterfly short comes out on November 30th. Uh, and that one on the lead, it's a story about um, this young teenager or this teenager who's graduating high school and he's in this relationship with this girl and something happens and uh, there's a lot of drama. It's based on three true stories webbed into one. Um, wow. And it's, it's his struggles through that relationship and just learning about who he is. He struggles with bipolar disorder. Um, and so you, you start off hating the character and then you learn more about him and the situation uh, through that one. Uh, but that one's been winning. We've won awards in a bunch of monthly like short festivals and uh, everywhere from France to India to South Korea to the United States. So I think we got, um, the cast has been doing great on that. Uh, the directing and the writing was really good on that too. Uh, and there's a feature film for that coming out next year. Uh, we're learning about who's going to be cast in that uh, yeah. early next year. Awesome. And then, yeah. So, and then I got a historic, we haven't filmed something coming up that we haven't filmed yet. There's a historical drama, Pax Regnum, centered around like uh, 43 BC or something like that until 70 AD. Um, and I'll be like a key character, I'm supposed to be playing a key character in that. Nice. And that'll be filming in Texas next awesome. year. So. Yeah, got some exciting. Got a lot, stuff lot, lot of good stuff coming out. And uh, for those listening and watching this, keep an eye out for Jake because I see him being pretty big in the acting industry. I, I, you're in, you're in some pretty decent roles already. And I, I mean, keep an eye out for Jake. And if you want to see anything else that he's involved with after this interview uh, wraps, and say it's a year from now, and you want to see, you see, come across this interview, like, hey, I wonder what he's up to now. Check out his IMDb because right there we'll have all of his movies, um, past and present and future that will be coming out definitely definitely yeah thank you for having me uh, yeah. you can follow me on instagram at yeah. underscore jake underscore kaufman that's underscore jake underscore kaufman with a k-a-u-f-m-a-n and yeah uh follow me on facebook and uh like my page sounds yeah. good i have i have i think four if i'm not mistaken instagram accounts uh, um one for myself one for my production company one for this podcast and one for um to uh, my other podcast to the movies uh which is like a movie review podcast so i'll give you a follow on all four of them as well definitely thank you so yep. much not a problem thank you so much jake for joining me yeah definitely have a good one yep you do the same bye <laughs>